Let's tell a story about Timmy's life. It's a kind of story you should share to a loved one. Everybody knows Timmy in his time, starting with his academic background. Timmy didn't just graduate top of his class in Cambridge, he was also the highest honored cadet in his entry class of Her Majesty's Navy. Not only that, he is a record holder in the Guinness World Records. The Guinness Book of Records say that the longest a man has ever stayed underwater, holding his breath was for 24 minutes, 30 L seconds. Timmy broke the record on July the 3rd, 1953, for 57 minutes and 18 seconds. He spoke 16 languages, which out of fun he rewrote the holy books in different languages during his spare time. This was so impressive that he became one of the youngest people to ever become a member of clergy in the Great Church of England. Timmy was not just a reverend, but also a wealthy man. Together with his beautiful wife, Bridget, they had just buried his father, but he never knew his mother. Timmy was finally back to his hometown after his father's death with his wife and their little baby girl, Allison. This is his home now. He didn't stop there as a reverend. He got familiar with the town and fixed up the church. The church had grown after eight years and with little Allison always by her father's side, everyone loved them. In fact, even though he wasn't the highest clergyman in the country, he was asked to pray for Princess Alexander on the evening of independence. You can tell now how important he was even to his country. Life was sweet for everyone and sweeter for Timmy and his family. But there is a saying that says, nothing is permanent in this wicked world, not even our troubles. The baby fire gang is here to steal kill and destroy like the devil. Timmy witnessed the rampage, but everyone is afraid of baby fire even when they knew that he and his gang members were behind the killings. Timmy obliged, he was going to swear in court against baby fire. Bridget knew what baby fire is capable of doing. She pleaded with her husband not to do this, but he wouldn't listen to her. It was the day at the magistrate court Timmy reaffirmed to everyone that baby fire was behind the rampage. After all proceedings in the magistrate court, the judge ruled that there was no sufficient evidence to prosecute the accuser. The crowd quickly defended into total chaos. This city was no longer safe for Timmy's family, so they must leave. The only place he could find solace is in the presence of God when the devil came to attack. Baby fire had his eyes on him. He must pay with his family. The only thing that brought joy to his world was not only taken away from him, but burnt to ashes in his very eyes. Timmy laid there and mourned his family for nine days, even when everyone came to help, but he just laid there. Until he finally got up, he was going to do what God wouldn't. It is high time Baby Fire had a taste of his own medicine. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Now, what's the essence of life without life itself? He just wants to be with his family, but it seems God was watching. The gun appears to be shooting, but it wasn't killing. Timmy tried to kill himself in the most ridiculous ways over the next few weeks, but God halted death. Then what did God want? God has another mission for him. Timmy had just buried his butler after 35 years, the only real family he had left. Now he needed a house help as an old man he has become. At that point, a young man named Elijah, who had just finished his NYSC but couldn't find a job anywhere. He came across the church in the city. It has always been his dream to start his own church. He saw Chief Okonkwo with some white men, but he had no idea of what they were up to. He heard about the job opportunity in Mr. Timmy's empire as a house manager which pays very well, but you have to be up to the task or probably get killed. Elijah wants the job. The young man found his way into Timmy's mansion, but he went aghast by the sight of Timmy. As pathetic as it may sound, he is asthmatic. After much conviction, Elijah got the job. Timmy usually has his breakfast by 8 a.m. sharp, three eggs with a cup of coffee. Elijah was very happy for the privilege until he found out that it was a cataclysm. Only if he was ready to withstand Timmy's barrage will he find satisfaction with his new job. It took Elijah 16 tries and three hours to learn how to make omelet for him. And with other jobs that he did, he was beginning to find contentment in his new job. Should we say that he was better than others who were chased out? 
No, I guess there is something more about him. He met with Timmy's lawyer, Mr. Coker, who advised him to be strong and also warned him about calling the name of God or anything related in his house if he wants to remain alive. How pathetic can it be for the boy who loves God and the old man who hates the name? He has to find a way, and the only way is during Timmy's siesta, he would sneak out of the house to the old abandoned church and begin to fix it up. He knows that his boss wouldn't find out since he doesn't talk to anyone in the town. That weekend, he went to the community hospital to get a new inhaler. This was where he found his missing rib. Anna, she works there as a volunteer. Every man knows her when he finds her. As a servant of God that he knows that he is, it was an opportunity to preach the good news to the sick and also feed them from his boss's bounty. Everybody loved him and wanted to pay him back. He wanted the patients to pay him back by inviting Anna to the Bible study in church. Anna decided to attend one evening, and even though she was late, Elijah was happy to see her, but his asthmatic condition wouldn't stop embarrassing him. But she still found him interesting and asked him to walk her home. They met more often after that day, but first at the riverside. Anna wanted to swim, so does a man who will do anything to make her day. The lovers saw each other almost every day for the last six months. Elijah has found his family within a short period, his wife and his father who grew fond of him. Not until Timmy found out what the boy had been up to in recent times. He wouldn't accept anyone living under his roof to build faith in God, for it is abominable to him. And if Elijah thinks that he has what it takes to lead the people, then he has a task for the boy to convince him. He must find a scripture in the Bible before breakfast tomorrow if wants to continue with his faith in Christ. Elijah didn't sleep that night as he searched through the scriptures for what Timi asked for until he finally got it. This time around, Elijah did something audacious. He did not only stand by his master, but he also served him the scripture he asked for. Timi still misses his family. The camera had a lot of memories, but was bad. He could still remember his family in his heart, which makes him become arrogant each day. All we know about Timmy is that he takes his breakfast by 8 a.m. in the morning and then reads the papers for the day. We don't know what he does indoors for the rest of the day. But this day he broke his glasses and Elijah had the opportunity to read for him. This was the best thing that has ever happened to him over the last nine months of working with his master. He could hear him think and talk about issues and ideas which made him learn so much. Elijah then requested for more papers and magazines to read to him. Timmy doesn't mind sitting, talking, and even telling stories and his life experiences, so long as there is coffee on the table. Then Elijah knew that his master wasn't truly a bad man. Life just happened. Anna hasn't seen Elijah for a while now, ever since the boy grew fond of his master. No one comes knocking at Timmy's mansion, but she had the temerity. Unfortunately, Elijah has gone to get eggs for his master. Timmy almost ripped life out of the young lady until she fell. It's been donkey's years since the old man really felt pity for something. Even the young man could attest to that. Something was beginning to change as Timmy no longer cared about little things. Anna now comes in and out of Timmy's mansion without permission and their love grows stronger. One day, Elijah went to an old store. He found a projector, but it was bad also. He knew Timmy would love to watch his family once again, so he decided to get a new one. Timmy came in to see what he has missed for a long time. He later brought other cassettes and wanted to watch them, but he can't see them like this. The cassette has to be put on a film projector, which might take almost a month. The videos were finally available for Timmy to see. Ever since then, Timmy's evening rituals changed. He no longer cries watching them anymore, but rather a blissful memory, which he tells the kids stories about every moment. It typically made Anna cry. Timmy now dined with the kids and wanted the kids to take the relationship to another level. Anna invited Elijah to her house to meet her parents. He never knew Chief Okonkwo is Anna's father. Everyone knows Timmy's house manager, including Chief Okonkwo. He warned him to leave and never come back. But why? Chief Okonkwo wanted to pull down the church building long ago for a hotel, but ever since the church was in use again, it has been difficult for him to achieve his aim.
That evening, Chief Okonkwo went to the church to give them a quick notice to evacuate the church in 90 days or pay the sum of 49 million naira, which he paid to the state, the land use charge the church has accrued over the years. Elijah and Anna believe the people can save the church, so they walked to every street and door for assistance, but nobody listened to them. Since the idea didn't work, his master is their only hope, only if they could ask. Timi wouldn't give a listening ear to them even when the amount is like a drop in a bucket to him. Anna confronted him about being so cruel to save a church that he built, but Elijah came in to plead on her behalf. He went outside to scold her never to talk to his master like that again. It resulted in an argument and they bantered words on each other. Anna slapped him and angrily left. For weeks now, Anna did not visit home, neither did she come to their favorite spot. He decided to go wait for her at her father's mansion. He knew that he had offended her, but she wouldn't come see her. Come the night and rain, only if she could listen to him. Elijah still made his master's breakfast by 8 a.m. He used the opportunity to tell him that he wanted to partake in the protest against the demolition of the church, which was going to take place the following day. Timmy then promises the young lad that he will see what he can do about it. At least, that's what Elijah wanted to hear. Then came the day to demolish the church, as everyone looked helpless as though they could change anything. But young Elijah still had faith in God even at the 11th hour, who says God does not exist. At the last count of the seconds, a letter came from the British High Commission. The building must not be demolished. Meanwhile, while all this was happening, Anna was locked inside of her room because her parents knew what she was capable of if she was allowed at the scene of the demolition. She quickly ran to see him that evening. She really missed him. She wants to carry his child because it's the only way her father could let them be. Elijah was tense with what was about to happen. He hadn't had sex since God knows when. He needed his inhaler, but unfortunately for the lad, it had finished and he was at his last gasp when Timmy came in and was rushed to the hospital. The doctor confirmed he had chronic lung failure and was wrongly diagnosed with asthma. Elijah needed a lung transplant to live and getting a donor is very hard. Timmy asked the doctor to place him on the ventilator so he could call on specialists to intervene. He invited them from far and wide, the best pulmonary specialists in the world, but they couldn't do anything. Timmy didn't give up. There was another option. He instructed Mr. Coker to pay as many emergency room doctors as he could find around the country. They were supposed to convince people who had just loved their loved ones to donate their lungs for a transplant. All the doctors tried to explain how the death need not be in vain if it helped save another life. But it just wasn't working. Timmy got impatient and took matters into his own hands, not minding that what he was asking for wouldn't be the right time of their grieving moment. Timmy hasn't felt this emotional in years. He was going to do something no one else may not have thought of. He was going to see his mansion for the last time, from little Allison's room to every part of his house that makes him feel alive. He asked Anna to take care of him while he had something to sort out. He tracked down Elijah's orphanage home, where the boy grew up to officially adopt him. He didn't stop there. He willed all his wealth and possessions to the boy, who perhaps was going to die any time soon. Now to the church which he hasn't visited since the demise of his beloved family. He had an unfinished business with God. He now knows why God kept him alive, but his time is up now, and it's time for his son to live again. Elijah needs his lungs, and he is willing to save him. All he has ever wanted was to see his beloved family again. Suddenly the doors closed and the wind blew like the gate of heaven had long awaited this soul. Timmy knew his time had come to be united at last with his family. Oh, life. Can I tell you something? In family life, love is the oil that eases friction, the cement that binds closer together, and the music that brings harmony and I can tell you that today is the greatest day in the life of Timmy. Elijah is whole again. He wanted to see his father, only if he had known the exchange that took place at the gate of life and death. 
but Timmy didn't leave without a letter to his son, and it says, My dear boy, to see your face one more time especially healthy and happy is a treat I'll give the world for alas. Even I cannot deny that God has the final say in these matters. And while I'm here in thought, Anna will always be your side. She's an amazing woman who will make you very happy. And do not worry about her father. Once he knows how much money you have now, he will definitely let you marry Anna. I don't want you to be angry or sad or feel guilty of being alive. I have lived my life. It is time to live yours. And I'll always be with you. And what a beautiful life it will be, full of possibilities to do whatever, to be whoever. This was a letter from a father to his son. So I ask again, who says that God does not exist? Thanks for watching. Please comment your thoughts and also like and share this video for more super amazing videos that we are bringing to you. And if you're watching from our YouTube channel, you can also subscribe and turn on your notification for more. Thank you.